Hello everyone. So again welcome back to our latest lecture session. So in the last couple of sessions we have been looking at applications right. I think we had uh, different initial compounds that we could put in uh, mostly with respect to aluminum hydroxide or such right or alum I believe right. And then we tried to calculate what the amount of solid is going to or what is the concentration of the solid that is going to precipitate out from the solution and what is the uh, amount of uh, the metal still present in the uh, aqueous solution either in the form of the free metal or in the form of various complexes right. So, today we are going to look at a uh, practical example here let us say and here we are going to first try to set it up by hand we are not going to solve it by hand at least I am not going to right. So, but I am going to set up the relevant equations by hand and uh, you know leave it at such a stage where they can be solved and then we are also going to look at uh, using Vimintech to obviously arrive at the solution within a fraction of the time that we take uh, solving it by hand. But obviously why do we need to set it up by hand right uh, because you need to understand the uh, basics again. So, you will see uh, the difference between using Vimintech and setting it up by hand uh, again with respect to understanding the basics when we set it up by hand I guess right. So, again let us uh, dive into our particular example here. So, here we have uh, FeCl3 right uh, is added as a flocculant you know this is a common uh, flocculant right to water uh, right water treatment plants. So, here we also say that the controlling solid is ferrihydrite right that is information you always need and obviously again why do you need the relevant information about the controlling solid right because uh, the controlling solid and the relevant uh, what is it now uh, dissociation constant uh, pardon me or the solubility product not the dissociation constant the solubility product depends on the kind of the controlling solid for different controlling solids or types of solids you saw you saw that you had different types of solubility products or solubility constants. So, unless you choose the relevant uh, solid right or try to approximate it based on the experience that you have had right you cannot obviously arrive at the right answer. And in general as we discussed earlier in general the amorphous forms which are the most soluble forms of solid are first are formed first and more or less I believe you know here ferrihydrite is a good enough example. So, within the uh, time frames that we look at in a water treatment plant with respect to coagulation and flocculation right let us say formation of ferrihydrite is a worthwhile approximation right and is the only solid that forms right. So, first we are going to look at uh, part A and that says determine the pH and also the dissolved iron concentration if initially 10 power minus 4 molar of FeCl3 is added right. So, here first let us try to understand the system. So, let us say you had uh, water and you are putting in let us say what is it now 10 power or you are adding FeCl3 such that the initial concentration would have been 10 power minus 4 molar right. So, uh, how is the system going to change now? So, Cl minus right it is uh, re relatively non reactive at least with respect to the aspects we have covered thus far and it does not play any further role you know in general let us see. It can form minor complexes, but it usually is not uh, what do we say. Uh, relevant in this particular context with respect to the iron anyway right the ferric iron. Uh, but obviously as you know putting in ferric iron can lead to formation of what now both the complexes aqueous complexes that you are aware of. So, Fe OH complexes are formed. So, in effect when you take out OH minus from the solution and form a complex what is that going to leave, lead to right. So, that is more or less like uh, an acid right for adding an acid because you are taking out OH minus or adding H plus. So, the pH you would expect it to drop yes. So, obviously that is the reason uh, we are trying to look at what the pH going to be right. And obviously the other aspect is other than uh, the relevant complexes and the acid base relevant uh, change in pH. We also know from our precipitation background that uh, ferric hydroxide can precipitate out in the form of ferrihydrite right. So, once this uh, let us say a fraction of this 10 power minus 4 right this is a fee total let us see. Fe total is 10 power minus 4 molar right. So, if we know that Fe total will be in the form of Fe total after it reaches equilibrium in the aqueous phase and also in the solid phase right. So, here obviously you are also concerned with what is the dissolved iron concentration as in what is Fe total in the aqueous phase right. So, obviously for that you need to be able to calculate your Fe total uh, that has or you know the ferric iron that has precipitated out. Once you calculate the amount of iron that is precipitated out you can subtract that from the uh, initial or Fe total and then get the Fe total in the aqueous form right. So, obviously again keep in mind that when we are talking about dissolved iron concentration we are also taking into account not just the uh, free metal, but also the complexes because they are also you know in the dissolved phase right. 
and different forms of iron. So, we consider even the complexes to be different forms of uh, uh, dissolved iron. So, again how do we solve for pH and also obviously the Fe total aqueous. So, obviously uh, what is our approach here? We always uh, have the component balance right. So, for this particular example I guess I am going to set it up in a relatively detailed manner, but I am not going to solve for the relevant values that I am going to leave uh, to you let us say as part of the homeworks or such. But with the Vmin tech we are going to go through with the calculations right. So, component balance right. So, first component balance we need to identify the species. So, species are the uh, what is it now uh, relevant uh, compounds that would be present once the system has reached equilibrium. So, obviously what do you have obviously you always have H plus and OH minus and then you will obviously have the ferric iron right uh, uh, free metal and then you will also have the relevant complexes. And I think from our background uh, ferric hydroxide complexes usually there are 4 types formed right that are usually predominant and that is what I am going to list. If you are not sure obviously you can look up the relevant uh, standard books and uh, find out how many uh, constants there are right and then come up with the relevant number of complexes. And also obviously you are going to have or we are going to consider that uh, what we say the solid is precipitating out. So, I am going to go ahead with the assumption that solid is formed. So, first assumption is obviously that I am assuming that assume that solid is formed or precipitation occurs right or the precipitation occurs. So, thus with that in mind I am going to list my species. So, H plus OH minus and then the free metal right and then I am going to list all the complexes right with respect to Fe and OH and 2 plus charge Fe and OH twice plus 1 charge Fe and OH thrice the complex with 0 charge or neutral Fe OH 4 and negative charge and obviously I am going to be left with my solid Fe OH thrice and the solid and obviously Cl minus, but in the case that we are considering right you know uh, Cl minus uh, we are assuming that it does not play any further role. So, actually we can neglect Cl minus 2, but obviously if you are looking at charge balance you would have had to consider that, but for further calculations as you see and all the species that I have listed right Cl minus does not play any further role. So, I can neglect uh, the role of Cl minus in my further calculations. So, obviously <coughs> what are the components here? So, usually we choose H plus right and we use choose the metal and obviously Cl minus, but I am going to neglect that later on right. So, we are done with listing the species and then the relevant uh, components the building blocks right. So, and then what next I need to list my uh, formation equations as in how am I going to form the relevant species from my components. So, here we are going to only work it out for the non component species as in I am not going to uh, show the relevant formation equations for H plus Fe 3 plus and Cl minus. So, we are going to have to look at the formation equations for OH minus Fe OH 2 plus Fe OH twice plus Fe OH thrice 0 charge Fe OH 4 negative charge and then the solid 2 right but I am going to start neglecting Cl minus from here on right. So, am I missing anything else ok. So, how do I use or come up with these particular uh, species from the components. So, that is the formation equation right. So, here obviously H 2 O minus H plus right and here it is going to be equal to F E 3 plus and I need to have uh, 1 O H minus right. So, that is going to be equal to what now plus H 2 O minus H plus hopefully that does resolve it Fe 3 plus plus H 2 O minus H plus so 1 O H minus right. So, here Fe 3 plus plus I need to in effect have 2 O H minus right. So, that means I am going to have 2 times of H 2 O anyway I will write this as 2 times H 2 O minus 2 times H plus right and Fe 3 plus would be Fe O H thrice would be 3 times H 2 O minus 3 times H plus and Fe 3 plus plus 4 times H 2 O minus 4 H plus and Fe 3 plus plus 
3 times H2O minus 3 times H plus even for the solid I guess right. So, now let me just uh, tablet this I guess I will just list the uh, tableau here and keep in mind that I am starting to neglect uh, the role of Cl minus here because I have not listed that in any of the species here. So, I am going to list only the two components here uh, which are H plus and Fe 3 plus. So, again need to list all the species. So, again because I said I am going to do it in a relatively detailed manner here I am going to set this up. So, I am just obviously listing all the species here right and once you have the relevant background we could or we can uh, skip writing the formation equations and just directly uh, list the relevant species and the tableau right. So, anyway for now I am listing this. So, how do I get to H plus I need 1 H plus to form 1 H plus and 0 of Fe 3 plus. How do I get to OH minus I look at this particular equation right. So, I need minus 1 H plus and no Fe 3 plus obviously Fe 3 plus 0 H plus is required 1 Fe 3 plus is required. How do I form this complex again I look at the relevant equation here. So, 1 of ferric and 1 minus 1 of H plus and so similarly 1 minus 2, 1 minus 3, 1 minus 4 and here 2 it is going to be equal to 1 and minus 3 again that is from this equation for the solid 2. And obviously, I need to add the recipe species right and what is the recipe species here whatever it is that I am plugging in initially not plugging in part me uh, you know adding to the solution initially. So, that was Fe Cl 3 if you remember from the question right we are adding Fe Cl 3 right and I guess I should have written that here how can I form Fe Cl 3 here. So, I need let us say what is it now Fe 3 plus plus 3 Cl minus right. So, if I had listed C L minus this would have been 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0, but I could have listed C L minus which I have not listed here as one of the uh, species. Well, let me go ahead and do that C L minus 0 0 and 1 and so here what is the balance F E C L 3 any role of H plus here no. So, that is going to be 0 here and F E 3 plus is 1 from here I guess right and how much C L minus is that it is 3 right. So, with that I have the component balance equations as we saw earlier because I did not consider any C L minus related uh, species here right chloride related uh, species here I am setting that up as just C L minus would be equal to 3 times the F E C L 3 concentrations that is obvious right. Anyway how do I solve for this let us say just for purposes of F C L total is equal to what now C L minus concentration of C L minus right that is what you have from the total component balance here and obviously, what is that equal to the recipe species that is equal to 3 times of F E C L 3 concentration right. So, then I can calculate that. So, I am done with my uh, one of the uh, variables here, but obviously, I have the other two uh, component balance equations. So, I guess for lack of space I am going to list them in the next particular uh, uh, slide here right. So, first let me try to list H total and then F E total right H total. Uh, so, it should be H plus minus O H minus right minus the complexes right F E O H twice and I believe plus 1 charge obviously minus F E or 2 times now right minus 2 times F E O H I guess a minor issue here. 2 plus right F E O H twice and plus here minus 3 times F E O H thrice 0 charge right minus 4 times F E O H 4 minus right and I believe the last one was uh, the solid 3 times F E O H thrice this is the solid. Now, keep in mind that this was the aspect that we talked about earlier right. So, in the earlier classes if you remember how did we set it up with respect to the solid now right. So, in general when we talk about the concentration of this particular complex or such we are talking about the number of moles of that particular complex in uh, dissolved in a particular volume of water. But here with respect to solid we do have it as a variable, 
but keep in mind that you know you need to get your basics right that it is not uh, dissolved in water it has precipitated out or it is in a different phase right. But for our uh, need to calculate the relevant amount of solid that has precipitated, precipitated out we are having a variable here and the units here obviously are going to be moles of solid that has precipitated out from the solution for the volume fr from which it has uh, precipitated out right. Anyway that is a basic uh, what we say understanding that you need to have and Fe total. So, anyway how did we get this particular equation now obviously right uh, from this particular set of uh, component balances right and that is what we have and what is that equal to and anyway I will plug that in later or not really I am going to just show that here right now and obviously from our my recipe species 2 what do I have H total to be equal to now H total is equal to 0 right H to which is equal to 0 times Fe Cl 3 not right. So, that is equal to H total is equal to 0 and now Fe total is going to be equal to Fe 3 plus concentration again how am I writing this or how are we writing this I am just balancing this particular set of terms right. So, Fe total is in the form of what now Fe 3 plus Fe OH 2 plus Fe OH twice with the plus 1 charge and so on. So, this is nothing but the component balance here right. So, Fe 3 plus plus uh, what else please Fe OH 2 plus charge plus Fe OH twice plus 1 charge plus Fe OH thrice no charge plus Fe OH 4 negative charge and also the solid right. And obviously again what is this equal to and again I am going to go back to here I see that it is 1 times the recipe species concentration right. So, that is equal to 1 times Fe Cl 3 naught right. So, here let us list the number of variables we have. So, there are 1, 2, and 4 complexes right. So, that would be 6 plus 1 7, 7 plus uh, 1 other uh, free metal concentration. So, we have 8 variables right, but I have only how many equations do I have so far I have 2. So, I have 8 variables and I have 2 equations. So, I still need to come up with 6 more equations right. So, how do I come up with that now right. So, obviously, I have 1 equation K w is equal to H plus into O H minus right. So, that is one particular equation yes. So, what are some of the other equations here obviously I still need to come up with 5 more equations. So, you know that for each of these 4 complexes I can I have the relevant uh, beta 1 star, beta 2 star, beta 3 star and beta 4 star right. And how do we come up with this or what is the relevant equation for these uh, beta 1 star, beta 2 star and so on. If you remember we had for with respect to complexes we defined 4 types of coefficients right and different books have different uh, kinds of these coefficients listed. But in general for the component balance it would be worthwhile to look at beta 1 star and so on why is that because beta 1 star if I remember right right it is the direct addition of the protonated ligand. So, let us see one particular uh, relevant equation here let us see. How am I going to form let us say my complex here I am going to consider for beta 1 obviously should be Fe OH 2 plus. So, it is going to be in equilibrium with I start with the metal right. So, beta 1 star direct addition does not make too much sense here because it is only one particular ligand here, but here beta 1 star refers to the protonated ligand right protonated ligand. So, ligand is OH minus the protonated form would be H2O right. So, to balance it out obviously, I need to have H plus here right. So, again for the relevant beta 2 star what would the equation be Fe 3 plus plus. So, it needs to go to Fe OH 2 plus 1 charge right. So, here uh, the aspect of direct addition comes into picture. So, it is going to be 2 H2O right direct addition to Fe 3 plus rather than coming through or coming or uh, utilizing Fe OH twice and so on right Fe OH 2 plus. Again Fe 3 plus plus direct addition of the protonated ligand would leave me with 2 H plus right. 
So again, I'm not going to list them for the other equations, but let's just write down what is beta one star going to be equal to. That's going to be equal to the concentration of H plus, right, into concentration of Fe OH two plus, right, by Fe three plus. Yes, and for beta two star, what is it going to be here? It's going to be equal to H plus square. Right, it's from this equation obviously, times Fe OH twice positive charge by Fe three plus. Again, in the same manner, you can list it for beta three star and beta four star, but you get the picture. So now we have how many more additional equations? We have one earlier, so two plus one from KW water dissociation constant, and beta one, two, three, and four. So, I have four more equations here, right. So, 2 plus 1, 3 plus 4, uh, I think I have only 7, right, but I still need to have one more equation to be able to solve for this particular set of problems, right. And what is that equation now, right. And keep in mind here, obviously, we have a particular aspect related to precipitation, right. So, obviously, you know the solubility product Fe OH thrice, uh, the solid will be equal to or will be in equilibrium with pardon me right Fe 3 plus plus 3 OH minus right. So, you know that this K solubility product for ferry hydride you can get the constant right is going to be equal to nothing but Fe 3 plus times OH minus 1 cube by the activity of the solid which uh, for a free uh, for a pure solid you know is going to be equal to 1. So, now you have the additional or the final equation. So, you now have 8 equations and 8 variables, right. But obviously, what are you going to do? You are going to transform all the variables such that, right, these 2 equations such that you are going to only have, let us say, either of Fe 3 plus and the solid Fe OH thrice the solid, right, or just H plus and Fe OH thrice solid as the 2 variables, right. You are just going to plug in the relevant uh, what do we say equations into these 2 particular equations such that you are, you are only going to narrow down the number of variables to 2 variables right that is just substitution which I am not going to go through here obviously. So, but because our particular question asks you to solve for pH right. So, obviously it makes sense to look at or have uh, the relevant variables to be H plus and Fe OH thrice solid right. So, and then I can solve for it. And if the particular solution for Fe OH thrice the solid turns out to be negative, what does that mean? That means obviously the solid has does not precipitate out and you need to not consider the solid and then redo the calculations, right. But obviously, if it turns out to be positive, what does that mean? I have arrived at my true solution, right and obviously, then I do not need to go further anywhere, right. So, let us say I am assuming that or it should turn out to be positive in this case. So, you will now get the Fe total in the solid right and by solving for H plus I can also calculate the pH. So, I calculate the pH and Fe total solid and what does the question ask for? So, it says calculate the pH which you are able to do and it asks for the dissolved iron concentration and how can I get that? So, we solve for pH from H plus right and dissolved iron nothing but Fe total in the aqueous phase that is equal to Fe total minus the iron that has precipitated out and this is something you just calculate right. So, with that at least by hand right this is the procedure to go about uh, solving for your particular uh, uh, this particular scenario right. Again keep in mind that we started with the assumption that the solid is going to precipitate out right and if that variable turned out to be a negative value then you would have had to remove that particular variable meaning you would consider that obviously that no precipitation has occurred and go through with the relevant uh, calculations right. So, now obviously, you know this is by hand and you can use solver to solve for those 2 equations. Solver is a function in Excel that you can use wherein you can set or ch ask Excel let us say to change a, a set of cells such that another cell will be either equal to minimum, maximum or in this case equal to 0. Anyway, that is for you, you can look it up in Excel I guess right. But now, let us see how to set it up by Vmintech right. So, what are the aspects that we need to look for? I need to give the total component concentrations. So, I know that if you remember that H total is equal to 0 
and F E total was equal to I believe 1 times F E C L 3 naught that was equal to what is the concentration that we plugged in please 10 power minus 4 molar 10 power minus 4 molar right and also C L total is equal to 3 times F E C L 3 naught right and that is equal to 3 into 10 power minus 4 molar right and obviously you also need to specify the solid and we know that ferry hydride is something that you need to consider. So, we are going to just plug in these total components into the Vimintec and specify ferry hydride as the uh, uh, possible solid I guess right. So, let us move on to Vimintec. So, F E total first let us look it up and that is out here. I am going to use millimolar units to be to make it easier for me to plug them in I guess. So, 0.1 it was 10 power minus 4 molar right. So, 0.1 add that to the list and C L total what was that equal to and C L total was equal to 0.3 millimolar 0.3 add that to the list and I need to specify the possible solid phases. So, obviously that is going to be equal to ferry hydride right. So, I am going to add that and you can see that it is listed in the possible species present in the problem back to main menu and I am going to run my Mintech. So, obviously because we put in uh, ferric right uh, ferric can uh, or not can you know that it will form the complex or can precipitate out more or less it is going to remove the OH minus from the uh, solution right. So, thus obviously that is going to bring down the pH and that is what you see here the pH is now 3.5 3 7 right and then also look at uh, amount of finite solids and ferry hydride is formed at almost 10 power minus 4 9.7 into 10 power minus 5 means more or less 10 power minus 4 as in almost all the ferric iron that you added has precipitated out right. So, let us look at equilibrated mass distribution. So, here for Fe 3 plus the percentage dissolved is only 2.2 percent of the total that you plugged in initially but the percentage that has precipitated out is 97.7 or 97.8 percent of the total iron that you plugged in right. So, 90 almost 98 percent of the ferric uh, source of ferric that you plugged in Fe 3, 3 plus precipitated out right and only 2 percent is present as or in the uh, dissolved phase in the various complexes. Again within this 2 percent let us see which particular uh, what do we see aqueous complex predominates. So, I think we can look at that here and I think it is F E O H right with plus 2 charge if I am reading that right. Yes, F E O H with the plus 2 charge is relatively uh, predominant right. So, again this is what we expected and that is what uh, we saw here too. So, obviously the dissolved uh, so the question asked for if you remember pH. So, pH is 3.537 and asked for the dissolved uh, iron concentration. So, that is going to be equal to 2.2 into 10 power minus 6 or 2.3 into 10 power minus 6 molar units right ok. So, I guess with that I will be done with uh, part A. So, in the next particular uh, session we are going to solve for uh, part B I guess right and with that uh, I guess I bid I do and thank you.